Hello there, my name is Sunil Nafre and I am from Life Genius. I am a change coach. I help clients work through their issues and challenges and obstacles in any aspect of life, work or business. It's an absolute privilege and a great pleasure to welcome Jay Rahman uh, to this morning's podcast. Jay Rahman is an award-winning leadership lecturer and consultant Jay is known as the magician, and he is the only individual in the UK who has achieved six fellowships. Jay's vision is to develop seven million leaders by 2027. Now, this this is nothing short of absolutely phenomenal and amazing, and and really, uh, I, I think Jay, if I can welcome you onto this podcast. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Jay. Hi, Sunil. Morning. How are you doing? Fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and, you know, great pl- privilege to have you here uh, with, this, with this podcast. So before we get into some of the meat on the bone in terms of leadership, so we thought we'd have a discussion about leadership, particularly with, you know, what your views are um, on how leadership may be going through some kind of a transition as a result of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. But if we start off by maybe if you can just introduce yourself um, and tell us you know, a little bit about you, know, about you and, and the wonderful work that you, that, that you do in the industry. Um, firstly, Sunil, um, I'd like to say thank you very much uh, for inviting me and, and uh, the opportunity to collaborate. Uh, I am excited, it's a great buzz. Um, but yeah, um, uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, so um, what motivates me or what inspires me is, is changing the environment, helping pe- change people's perception, the way uh, in terms of behavior. And um, for the last year or so, I have been um, on LinkedIn observing people's behavior, success, and naturally inspires me, inspires me to do everything I can. And, and, and why, I'm, uh, why I like to introduce myself as a magician, I create mm. magical moments and with clients, with learners, um, uh, regardless in a, on, a, on a personal level, for me, it's important to get a reaction from the audience. It's important to help the audience appreciate their own vulnerabilities and develop that. And the, the, the big piece for me is emotional intelligence. Mm. If people are aware of their own vulnerabilities and they're able to read their own um, feel good about their own success, the, the behavior, the impact they have on others, uh, regardless positive and negative. But it's important to be aware. And, and, and what that allows me to do by uh, encourage by, by developing the emotional intelligence, it allows the professionals or the people I know to connect with the inner chi and, and, and feel good about themselves. Mm. And, and, and the reality is when you feel good, if you feel worth a million dollars inside, it shows on the outside. And you have a positive impact on the people around you, um, whether it's team members, family, friends. It's that mindset. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love doing, changing that, the, the mindset and, and taking professionals uh, or managers or leaders on an interesting journey. Wow, it sounds absolutely fascinating, Jay. Uh, Jay, tell us a little bit about um, your career and maybe... maybe a little bit about the about the fellowships that you've achieved because I don't know anybody who's got six. I know people have got a couple, but six is absolutely phenomenal. So just give like a little bit of a background on that. That would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely, Sunil. Um, so um, my career started with Safeway uh, as a as a sixteen year old, oh, and uh, now it's known as <laughs> <laughs> uh, now it's known as Morrison. Um, yeah. And, and as a young person, it, it was a massive opportunity for me to understand customers and clients mm. and, and, and work with people. Yeah. And as a young person, what I realized, I always had this impact on the people around me. Yeah. And what I mean by that, mm. uh, I remember customers would come in on a Saturday morning, uh, seven or eight o'clock in the morning, uh, buying their bread for the hotel and, and have a long conversation with me. And, and as, time, as time went on, it gave me the confidence to do a lot more. 
Um, and it, 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 for me, it's just the whole piece around helping my customers. Mm. And although I felt I was helping customers, the majority of the customers felt I had a positive impact on their life as a 16 year old. Mm. Um, and it was quite a shocking experience. Um, I found it quite difficult to work with you at the time. But as a young person, I didn't have that confidence mm. and I, I, I held myself back. And then after graduation, um, I, I joined the Royal Bank of Scotland. I worked with them for 10 years. Uh, it was massive. The organization invested in me, allowed me to develop my confidence, allowed me to network with professional clients, and, and also gave me the platform to shine as a young person. And it was that experience, that moment. And um, the one thing I remember the most, make it happen. Mm. That was the slogan RBS adopted at the time. And uh, the bank being the most admired globally, it was a huge buzz being part of the Royal Bank of Scotland. And it was so bizarre, Sunil, and it might make you feel uncomfortable. No. I would wear uh, my RBS suit to family and friends' wedding. I was so <laughs> passionate and I was so much in love with the brand. Anywhere I went, I would, I, would, I would take a piece with me. And it was so uncomfortable, my best mate. Uh, for his wedding day, forced me to go out with him to buy a suit. It was like, Jay, there's no way I'm going to allow you to wear your RBS <laughs> uniform. <laughs> That's what um, I call passion personified. My goodness. But that just shows um, how committed you were at that time. Obviously, you didn't make the connection with the, you know, the clothing and the setting and so on, but you just felt that it was an expression of you. Absolutely. See, what inspired really? me the most um, was making a positive impact on, on I have to say, have the creating moments which allowed me to um, inspire my clients, my customers. I mean, naturally, I was under pressure to, uh, to, to make the bank money and, and deliver on my yeah. commitment. Of course. Um, but what I found out, if you make it fun for the clients around you and people and you are open, honest, and people feel they can trust you, yes. you don't need to work hard to sell financial products. Yeah. It, it becomes a conversation, a conversation yeah. where you inspire confidence, you, you motivate your clients to, 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 to um, have the awareness around their financial well-being. And, um, <clears throat> and then sadly, 2009, um, mm. I lost my job. Uh -huh. And, and, and um, a, a, a good client of mine at the time encouraged me to consider teaching. What she said to me was, Jay, um, as a teacher, you can make an impact and you can connect with people um, at their level. And I would strongly encourage you to consider it as a yeah. career. Yeah. Um, and then when I lost my job, naturally, I went through a challenging phase. Um, it had an impact on my mental well-being. I felt uncomfortable. I felt depressed. And at that point, um, <clears throat> I realized it was important to develop a positive mindset. Mm. And, and, and I found the confidence and the desire to um, pursue uh, training, so a course on higher education, on, on, how to, on becoming a teacher. Um, but on the back of it, I also did training uh, in counseling. So I'm also a trained counselor. Okay. Um, and as the years progress, I combine them both together. So there's two, for me, there's two pieces, emotional intelligence mm. and person-centered care. Mm. Um, so with emotional intelligence, it's appreciating uh, my own behavior and how it affects the people around me. Mm. Person-centered care, it's putting the client first. Yeah. So whether it's a client, a learner, uh, you know, uh, an organization, you know, regardless how, how we look at it. Um, but it's that, for me, it's, that it's, 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 it's the opportunity to take professionals or, or individuals on an inspiring journey mm. and, and, and make a difference. Absolutely. And here I am. And yeah. yes. the reason why I wanted to achieve the fellowships, see, I spent a lot of time looking at people's profile on LinkedIn and through other sources. Mm. And um, what I found out, uh, similar to what you said, um, a lot of people, I, um, uh, the profile is between two and four. And I said to myself, um, if I want to be known as the magician, <laughs> I have to develop my personal brand. And it's not just developing a brand, but it also gave me the motivation to become the best version of myself in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. And when I did my research, I mean, it was effectively 
when I started looking at the process, uh, it was almost a 10 year journey. It's looking at the wow. opportunity. And um, it, it's also important, Sunil, to um, demonstrate to the wider audience that you are the real deal. Mm. Uh, you're not just mm. fake merchandise mm. uh, and you just using buzzwords. Yes. For me, it's important to inspire people. It's important uh, for me, uh, the, the opportunity is there to demonstrate if you want to work with me at my level, this is what you can achieve. Mm. And part of it is giving the audience a confidence to push their own boundaries. Mm. And, yeah. and with anything in life, if you don't push yourself, how can we possibly become good role models? Mm. And um, I'm, I've got my seventh in the pipeline. So by the end oh, of the year, wow. <laughs> I'll have my seventh. And I'm, I'm confident in the next three years, I'll have my tenth. So for me, it's that opportunity and it's just pushing the boundary. Yeah. And it's not to make it uh, harder for people to achieve. Um, I know I've put in a lot of work in terms of professional development and professional excellence. And it's always great knowing I'm the one who's changed the industry. I've yeah. set the standards so high. Yeah. Uh, I'm the pioneer. Uh, however, you know, people want to say it. But for me, it's also important to align it with my vision. Yes. And if I develop myself at the highest level and, and, and say to the wider audience, uh, you're not going to get a better version of this professional. You need to, you need to interact or work with me. Mm -hmm. um, so th there's also other motive behind the process. And that's my vision, how I want to push it. Um, and the way I look at it is I think of myself as a Cristiano Ronaldo in the learning and development industry. <laughs> and and I'll tell you why, Sunil. Um, I absolutely admire Cristiano Ronaldo in ter with regard to everything he has achieved. Yes. And what fascinates me, fascinates me is his desire, the drive to push himself. Mm. Despite achieving everything possible, he still pushes himself. And I see that energy in myself, the, the similar behavior. And also, Sunil, as a young person, um, Bruce Lee had a huge impact yeah. on me as a person. Uh, um, I grew up with, with um, Chinese culture around me. I had friends who were from the Chinese community. And I was always fascinated by this whole concept. Um, and as a young person, um, as I got more, uh, as I became aware, um, I learned about Bruce Lee and there's three things that uh, for me that's had a, a huge impact on me so the first part is the vision without a vision it's difficult to progress regardless you know what level you're at but we all need a vision to motivate ourselves then we need to have a strategy in place for me this is our game plan mm. without the strategy it's, it's, it, you cannot make anything happen and then it, the last piece which is the most important self-discipline sometimes things will change direction and and as a professional as a, a, as an individual it's absolutely key to stay focused and bruce lee as a as a young person um it changed the whole industry the world and also allowed people to connect uh, with regard to the west and the east and in terms of what he has achieved, I mean, even to this day, I, 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 I remind myself um, the impact he has had on me. Although I never had the pleasure or the privilege to meet Bruce Lee in person, but through the screen, I felt I connected well. Mm. And I've adopted those three key principles. Brilliant. That's, um, that, that's fascinating to hear. I'm just... Just quite curious uh, about the whole uh, phenomenon about being a magician. So do you feel that for you personally, Agatha, I think it's a very, very powerful thing to, to say about oneself. It shows that one, one has got uh, extraordinary skill. But do you, do you think for you that skill has come quite naturally? Do you think it's a natural gift that you've always had, you know, all the way back, say, from, from your younger days? Or do you think it's something that you had to work on because it's amazing if you're able to have such a massive impact on people and the whole industry and the sector as a whole and um, i had to work i had to push myself i had to work hard very hard uh, hard um 
as a young person, I, uh, I struggled um, with my social skills. Um, I had, um, I was overweight. I was bullied at school. Mm. Didn't really have many friends. Um, I only discovered my inner voice when I started university. Mm. Because my school and college experience was challenging. Yeah. Uh, just naturally, when you don't have friends, it has a huge impact on your I mean, back then, I didn't know anything about mental well-being and, and, and the inner confidence. But, but just reflecting, it had a huge impact on me as a person. Mm. But this is the best part for me, Sunil. It was my clients, my customers who made that difference. Mm. Um, so and I, 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 and I remember um, mm -hmm. I met this interesting individual when I was at the Royal Bank of Scotland. And this individual would come in on a Monday morning just to say hello to me. Oh, would this and be a customer? Somebody customer. Oh. And, and, all it, and all it was, uh, all, all this uh, uh, customer would say to me, Jay, I just, I just love uh, hearing your voice. You know, you're passionate. You, you know, you're so full of energy. And it's, we would literally communicate, speak for maybe five or ten minutes. Um, and then she would go off to do her, uh, but she had a business nearby. Mm. And it, it's just those little experiences, the moments that Very give us powerful. the confidence. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because for me, it was a powerful, um, I mean, when someone says, uh, I've, I've come in to see you, my friend, I want to see how you're doing. How was your weekend? People take a genuine interest in you and your existence. Um, the energy is absolutely amazing in, the, in terms of the uh, confidence. And also, Sunil, um, I struggled with, with, with communicating. I grew up in a um, a run-down council environment and speaking uh, using slang words was a norm mm. and and i i didn't really know anything about communicating uh, effectively or speaking in english uh, 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 <laughs> as, as as well as possible and um i remember um my first three months uh, after joining the royal bank of scotland my manager said to me jay if you don't fix up you're out that's what happened. I had a customer queuing up in the banking hall and I just said, Giza, do you want to come over? <laughs> without, without, without realizing the impact uh, it could have. And then there have been a, a, a few situations where I've said to the lady customers, darling, do you want to come over? You know, I'll help you out. And, and at the t in the banking environment, not just a banking environment, but any environment, it's important to behave as professionals and i i did not understand this concept about being a professional and and how we should behave um and i clearly remember this conversation and it was the most challenging time as as a new member of the team and considering i was on probation it was a scary experience mm. um so so i some uh, i mean i had to adopt various strategies so I would sit in front of the mirror with, back then we had this Sony Walkman stereos. Mm. And so I would record my own voice, play it back. Then I would hear it back just to, uh, just to appreciate how I was pronouncing words. And it was, it was bizarre. It was awkward. Um, I would stand in, sorry, sit in front of a mirror for 10 minutes and talk to myself and mm. observe my body language. Mm. Um, but with experience, um, and it was absolutely brilliant. Scotland invested in me as my career progressed and 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 they allowed me to develop my communication skills they they, they uh, made me aware in with regard to interacting with professional clients um, because I worked with some amazing clients who are influential in their own ways and also it's not just about money and finance but it's about the influence people have on the environment the community and and it was absolutely buzzing just to have that level of experience um and, and 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 the fact that the bank invested in me and and gave me the confidence to push my boundaries honestly sunil if it was not for the royal bank of scotland and 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 you know i always remind myself of the experiences i have had there is no way my friend we would be having this conversation right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely so it was really a very significant um point in your in your own kind of career history or personal history really that you obviously it, it gave, i mean and sometimes we don't realize it that our working environment actually uh is almost like a semi-autonomous classroom 
It's lots yeah. of learning opportunities, but rather than it be conscious learning, it's more about acquiring, like you said, a better understanding of, you know, in terms of uh, being professional, the etiquette and the language and the mannerisms that we don't really necessarily learn them from school or college because that's not what college and school is really about it's about giving you that curriculum the underpinning mm -hmm. core skills in various subjects for you to move on to the next level of your of your um um journey you know in terms of mm -hmm. into higher education or 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 training or a job so so really that's that would you say that your time at the royal bank of scotland then kind of elevated you in many many respects um from a personal point of empowerment and professional point of view to then to then do some of the exciting things that you're doing at the moment do you want to just like give us a bit of a flavor of some of your current projects <laughs> um so i do have a few tv interviews in the pipeline wow. um, Amazing. um I, I have been networking with um a reputable tv channel in malaysia and i am excited um i have been invited to go out and 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 Talk, talk a little bit about my experiences and why I am known as the magician mm. and, and, and um, sharing my success. Um, so that's absolutely amazing in, in terms of a buzz. Uh, I'm also in the process of writing two books. Uh, uh, the first book is about myself as a person, the challenges I have faced and how I have developed my, uh, my mindset and my behavior. And the second book is about leadership and their behavior. Yeah. How, how leadership uh, sorry how managers and leaders need to behave uh, from my perspective so i mean I, it's amazing uh, i know with the lockdown it's had a huge impact on the wider community and people's mental well-being um but for me this lockdown has been a positive experience mm. um in the sense that it's given me the confidence to use my time my own personal time effectively um, so work is busy. Uh, uh, I mean, not stressful, but and, and my work is quite he uh, heavy going. So uh, once I've dealt with my work responsibilities, if you like, uh, it's just using my evenings and weekends just to look at opportunities. Um, I've also been involved with producing video content uh, for my viewers on LinkedIn. Um, um, I should be uh, publishing a video next week uh, uh, with regard to professionals sharing their advice on how leaders need to behave with the whole post-COVID-19 situation. Um, so if you ask me, Sun uh, Sunil, um, I'm running out of time. I, it just seems I just don't have sufficient time to do everything I would like to do. Um, I'm also networking with some universities in, in, in the States uh, to, to, to create opportunities for me to go out there and uh, share my passion uh, around leadership. Um, so I do have a lot of uh, exciting projects in the pipeline, Celine, and, and I just can't wait. And also working on my own vision, developing the concept and, and making uh, this whole project um, come alive. So I'm, I am absolutely excited. Really, that's, that sounds absolutely fabulous. It would be really, would be really good. Uh, I know, I mean, I'm definitely going to be, you know, reading the books when they're, when they're out. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I don't know whether, uh, obviously, the whole world is going through a massive transformation as a result of the uh, coronavirus pandemic and the fallout from it. Mm. Um, do you see any emerging um, issues or lessons for, for leaders of the future because the whole landscape in every respect, everything, socially, economically, politically, it's all changing and it's going to change even further. And there's lots of implications for leadership. Are mm -hmm. you, or is it too early for you to, to make any clarifications at this point? Or are you seeing any emerging um, threads coming across that, that all leaders, whether you're a leader of a family or leader of a community or leader of a of, an org of a large corporate organization or a country, do you see any, 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 anything emerging that's really that we all need to be taking into account, really, as we move forward? There's a few areas, Sunil, um, I don't, uh, which I don't think managers and leaders are aware. Yeah. Um, so just to give you an example, um, The Guardian published a few weeks back Globally, we could be looking at half the workforce uh, effectively being made redundant globally. Um, now, we're talking 1.6 billion people globally. Now, 
if we look at the impact, Sunil, not just from a financial element, but also from that mental well-being. I mean, if you consider half the population of the world effectively being out of work, it's going to have a huge impact on people's well-being, the whole mindset. And for leaders or leadership, um, see, um, something I was uh, taken back by. So the um, Guardian did some research last month and what they suggested globally in uh, with regard to the um, level of income businesses have lost, um, they, they, uh, they said it was $1.3 trillion. Now, I can't explain to you, Sunil, in terms of trillion, the digits and what it means for me. Uh, but what I can say is, is it's, a, it's, it's an amount we cannot ignore. And when we consider organizations losing that kind of capacity or financially that level of income, it, it, there's a huge emphasis on downscaling the business. Because without downscaling, how can you possibly sustain existing levels? It's just not going to happen. And, and for managers and leaders, it's absolutely important to appreciate this new, um, um, I mean, we would need to understand what is this new level with regard to the normal way of behaving. Yeah. Now, in the past, you know, in a 2020, according to research and, 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 and businesses and the views, 2020 uh, was scheduled to be the year that would set the world apart in terms of progression, prosperity, yeah. uh, and this whole vision around Vision 2020 and all this key branding and buzzwords. Um, but from my experience, I, I honestly believe organizations would need to consider downscaling Mm. Because without the downscaling piece, how do you sustain your business? How do you make it profitable? Because right now, Sunil, for mm. a, a lot of organizations, it's not just profit profitability. It, for me, it's more about the sustainability. Yeah. How yeah. do we sustain um, the, 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 the business as a whole? And the risk is, Sunil, mm. uh, regardless if it's a good leader or a bad leader, and we have good leaders and we have bad leaders. <laughs> But, but when it comes to downscaling, mm. it will have a negative impact on the wider team. Mm. Now, when, someone know, when someone's made aware there's a possibility or there, uh, there's the opportunity that uh, your job could be at risk and, and yeah. you could be put on furlough or whatever that is, yeah. it's going to have a huge impact on people's well-being. Yeah. Now, there's, now, there's two problems here, Sunil. Sure. The first one is downscaling. So we need to manage our expectations. We need to drive the vision forward from an organization's perspective. The yeah. second part is providing valuable support to the team members to keep them motivated and to yeah. keep them engaged. Yeah. Now, there's two things effectively happening at the same time. How do you manage them both effectively Best. When you put people through a redundancy process, and I know from my experience, Sunil, yeah. uh, in a, regardless how confident you are, how passionate you are about your success and your achievements, you would feel vulnerable. Absolutely, yeah. Because it's, it's your livelihood. Yeah. It's yeah. your bread and butter. It's, it's paying for your bills, your mortgage, your rent, whatever that is. And if we think globally, potentially we could be looking at 1.6 billion people half the population mm. that's worrying to me my friend it's very worrying yeah yeah and 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 for leaders um it's not just being human about the situation but it's also managing the expectations mm. and also sunil the other challenge managers would face um so london school of uh, economics the lse they recently published an article saying um, we, we managers and leaders are struggling to access valuable data. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept around the big data, but organizations rely heavily on this uh, idea around the big data. And all it is, is understanding their behavior about the customers, the clients, you know, uh, uh, everything within the organization and, uh, it, uh, and ensuring financially it, it makes sense to invest and expand and grow and all the rest. Now, if, we, if data is likely to be compromised because of this lockdown, how can then managers or leaders confidently say, yes, we have made the right decisions here? Mm. That creates another challenge in its own. And it's the same with regard to redundancy. If you are considering downscaling your organization, 
how do you then determine, because we've effectively been in lockdown for almost three months now, and we haven't had that social interaction, and although we might have a weekly drop-in session where we just say hi to our managers and leaders, but unless you have that physical connection, how can you fairly assess your team members and say, yes, I am confident I have made the right choice here or I have made the right selection? Mm -hmm. so, so it's not just... So interesting. What I have found, Sunil, I have been interacting with various managers and leaders from various countries. And it's not just looking at the UK uh, as a nation, but it's important to appreciate the global impact. Mm. There's naturally, um, we need to come together as, as, as a wider audience yeah. and inspire yeah. and support mm. everyone. Mm. And if you don't have that visibility, um, also, Sunil, the other part of the problem is communication. Now, you know, it, with all the technologies, Zoom and Teams and everything else, it's great to socially interact on, 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 on digital platform and, and connect with people. But let's be honest, without that social interaction, can we really motivate ourselves and feel inspired um, just observing someone's voice on a screen? Yeah. Not always. Yeah. Although, you know, we have professionals who are focused and who are driven. But when you're in your own home, if you like, there's a lot happening in the background. You, know, mm. you might have to look, you might have a family in the house that you're responsible for. You, know, you, might have to, you, know, you might have someone in the house who hasn't been well or has been affected by the whole outbreak. There's yeah. a lot of factors we need to consider. And if managers and leaders expect staff members to be productive and to be able to function at 100%, I'm sorry, it's not a realistic expectation yeah. Yeah. because it's also that piece around preparing yourself. And I know from experience, and, uh, there are a lot of companies and organizations who have failed to provide the staff members with the most basic training, mm -hmm. you know, how to set up, uh, how to set up an audio, uh, how to run a Zoom session, you know, how, do you have a headset? And it's, it's the tools, the essential, the basic, basic essentials. Mm. Absolutely, and if yeah, if, yeah. if if team members are not prepared to nil, mm. how can we expect them to generate? How can we expect them to be as productive as possible with everything else happening in the background? Yeah, I think Maslow's hierarchy. Of needs, <laughs> sorry, Jay. I think Maslow's hierarchy of needs comes to mind in terms of the basics, and if you can't. You want people to self-actualize and be their very best in terms of performance and being able to to really reach high for those targets, etc. Uh, then the basics have got to be, and absolutely, you're right in terms of their just checking mm. their well-being and the basics. And I'm just I'm just wary of the time as well. I know you're a really you, you're, you're you're very very busy, and I'm I'm conscious of the time as well. Just if we just want to close out the podcast by just maybe just sort of going through. Do you see? I mean, thank you so much for going through some uh, you know some of the challenges that uh, leaders are facing right now and they will do in the future do you see any key opportunities that have arisen as a result of this pandemic do you do you see any 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 kind of green shoots that were not there before but for the pandemic from a, um, a leadership perspective absolutely um, it's the whole concept around learning online and yes. um, with, the, with the lockdown in full swing, yes. it's also created the opportunity for people to connect. And I know from my own experience, uh, a lot of professionals have reached out to me for my advice and guidance and support. Um, just to give you an example, last week, a company approached me, asked me if I could deliver an online platform, a, a course for them on remote working. Mm. And there's all these opportunities, but from a leadership perspective, it's important to connect with the wider audience and yeah. learn from people's experiences mm. and ask, asking key questions. How are you managing or how are you coping? And, and, and for me, what's important is to appreciate what is this new level of accepted standard of behavior. Mm. And it's still early days to me to assess that. But as inspiring leaders and as role models it is absolutely necessary for 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 people to connect and you know it's not just thinking about uh, looking at it from a business perspective what's in it for me you know by me interacting with you but it's important to be human 
and, and learn from the wider audience. So for me, Sunil, um, there's huge potential to connect online uh, through LinkedIn and through other learning platforms and, and various other sources. But it's important to add value. Yeah. And what I have found, not all managers or leaders are committed. Uh, there's a huge emphasis on self-success. What's, it, what's in this for me as a professional? Why am I going to give up my time to help another organization or whatever that is? So, so interesting. But, but we're all in it together, Sunil. So really, do you think that leadership is going to become more collaborative, more collective? Do you feel? You have to. Because you it's, have about, to. it's about human survival. It's about, it's about sustainability. Absolutely, Sunil. And, and it's also learning from the wider audience. This is a challenge we have not faced. In the, uh, I know in the past we've had outbreaks, but for me, um, I mean, going through the whole re recession phase in 2008 was a huge challenge. But in comparison to what we're facing now, my friend, that's irrelevant. So do you think, just, just one thought has come to mind from what you've just said there. Do you think invariably this is the end of competition in in the marketplace <laughs> or do you think that or do you think that competition is going to have a different twist now uh, i mean with regard to competition um it'll never be an end but there'll always be opportunities and um the theory that comes to mind is porter's five forces mm. when there's op when when there are um a, a challenges or downfall they also creates for other organizations to enter the market yes yeah but from from my experience, Sunil, um, globally, it would, if we're able to connect and we're able to assess our own behavior, it creates the platform to develop good practice. And, and right now, there's a huge emphasis on taking responsibilities and being accountable for our own actions. And I believe if we do connect with the wider audience, we could enhance the whole in industry in terms of good practice. So from a competitive spirit or perspective there's huge potential to push uh, uh, to develop excellence so i'm excited about that um, i think companies who are very narrow in their thinking would struggle because they would effectively focus on sustainability but if you if, if you look at this whole covid19 situation and 2020 uh, the key buzzword would become covid19 uh, it should motivate or inspire organizations to do things differently mm. and, and connect with, with, with clients or customers. And we've, even with the whole lockdown, there are so many organizations out there who are making a lot of money. And I'm not suggesting that companies, uh, the, the key motive needs to be around making profit and money. It's, we also need to make a positive difference in the community. Mm. So for me, it's, it's the peace where we're able to learn from everyone and i am excited and, and fascinated by this concept it's going to take a while uh, it's going to take a while to um appreciate the norm or the normal way of doing things mm. but if we're focused and we're motivated and we have our team members behind us and for me this is uh it, it, it's the whole concept around creating a dream team where your team members are focused motivated and, and they care about your business and your brand. Mm. If we have all those key factors in place, Sunil, we have an exciting journey ahead of us. Fantastic. It seems that with the, uh, the whole leadership landscape now and in the future, it's really rife for research, isn't it? There's so many things that you could look at and just move those variables around. And, and uh, things which are out of our control, things are, are, are still in our control, all need to go into the mix. Thank you so much, Jay, for your time on this podcast. Uh, absolutely amazing. And obviously, um, there will, we'll have your contact details. If anybody watching this, this uh, podcast, if they directly want to get in touch with you and you know, they may have a question or a query or they, may, or they may want to work with you, you know, in some respect. So thank you so much indeed. I really do uh, appreciate your, your time. <laughs> and... Um, Hopefully we can do another podcast about another uh, important topic or a theme. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely, Sunil. Um, and um, I would also like to say a, a, a massive thank you to you uh, for, for taking time out and approaching me. And, and this is what I'm talking about, Sunil. It's important as professionals 
for for people to connect and network yes. and and you know sometimes we're so obsessed or focused with success yes you know you know what's in it for me but it's always nice when you, we can put all those facts all those elements to a side and just ask ourselves what can we do to 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 connect with our fellow uh, you know members of the community absolutely and 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 and, and this is why um for the last eight or nine weeks, effectively, I've dedicated my weekends just to interact with professionals at various yeah. levels. Yeah. And, and, and it's not just sharing good practice, it's also learning from people's valuable experiences. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and for me, the key thing is uh, everyone has a story to share, it's everyone a has a story to tell. It's just looking in the right places. Yeah, absolutely, that's uh, amazing. Thank you so much indeed, Jay. Thank you very much indeed. Really do appreciate your, your, your time and hopefully we'll be able to do another podcast soon. Okay, take Thank care. Thank you very much, Sunil. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.